Fellas, I have and I'm sure you have heard women say nothing like a well-groomed man. I have the solution to meet your hair grooming needs. Next Level 2 Barbershop with two locations in the upstate. 1559 Lawrence Road, Greenville, South Carolina. And 261 West Butler Road, Malden, South Carolina. With operating hours 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Ladies, I didn't forget about you either. On staff, beautician available at the Malden location, as well as a loctician to meet all your lock and braiding needs. Before you step out, step in to one of the two locations and take your grooming to the next level. Real fantasy. Real Fantasy Podcast. You could say a little. Or you could say a lot Dreams are what you ask for Real is what you got Take a few shots With a queen on her life A rose in the middle With love on her side It's all A vibe Tonight It's all A vibe Tonight Make sure you tune in tonight Real Fantasy Podcast Yo, 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 it's your girl Victoria Rosa And we here back with season three We have a new co-host Can you introduce yourself? I'm Chantel Wilkins, also known as the Tax Queen with RVA Tax and Financial Services. Mm-hmm. The twa- ta- oh, to twa- <laughs> the Tax Queen is here to show y'all and make sure y'all tune into her segment because it's going to be fucking amazing to show how they get your business started. You got any questions, make sure you e- email us. And we're about to get this thing started. So, first of all, I want to talk about this Roe versus Wade because I'm a woman. And I feel like it's only right that I could choose what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it. And they're trying to take away, well, they're trying to, well, state by state, they're trying to take away this, this, what was in the Constitution. So mm-hmm. let's get in Roe versus Wade. U.S. Supreme Court, which is ruled by the Constitution of the United States, protect women in the liberty to choose if they want to have an abortion or not without excessive government restrictions. So this guy, his I'm gonna call him Junior because it's it what is Samuel Junior. He wants to make sure that state by state can set implements where women can't have abortions when they want to have abortions or how they want to have abortions. So on um, May second, two thousand twenty-two, it was um. First of all, let me get into it. Yeah, I know who uh, Roe and Wade is, right? Do you know? Yeah, so so she was like, yeah, you know saying, you know, it was to stand up for the the women's rights, and you know, mm-hmm. so she's like, no, I feel like it's my body; I should be able to do what I want to do with it. Right, right. But it was like, no, uh, uh-uh, uh, you need to have these kids. We need to make sure that it's a, it's a fetus. It's and of course, we're in South Carolina and Texas is the main state that we're basically talking about. It's a bubble built. Mm. So they're like, oh, no, you shouldn't have an abortion. You shouldn't do this. But now he wants to go in and change it and then eliminate a lot of things that we have set in place for us to have abortions. And people, well, myself, I, I like to say, when I say people, I don't want to have to have a restrictions on something I feel like it's necessary to do. Mm-hmm. And this man, Junior, we're gonna, again, his name is Junior, he wanted to do that. So they're going to have a ruling by July the 2nd to say if it's going to be put in implement, if it's going to be state by state. Mm-hmm. Or is it going to be in the, you know, the Constitution of we have the ability to, to have an abortion or not. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about that? I personally, I don't agree with, you know, that because, I mean, as a woman, this is my body. I mean, I choose to have, you know, my children. I mean, mistakes happen. I mean, like if it was, you know, out of something that not that you were not planning for. I mean, it's your right to be able to get, you know, to abort the child. I mean, I mean, I did I I did um, hear some, you know, about the weeks of being, uh, you know, uh, how far along you are. I mean, like with the 15 weeks, I mean, at the 24 weeks, I think that is. It's you know it's a little late like the baby's you know forming you know it's it's and I get that's that's more his case too he's saying that 
we we have to stop it because you know sometimes you can go what is it past twenty four weeks yeah, yeah and and have an abortion in in, yeah, in see. and that's what he want to eliminate it's not just of saying no you can't have an abortion mm-hmm. but I guess it's more basically within the time frame right right which anybody that has a conscience is not going to kill a baby when you right. feel the heartbeat. But or feel the baby kicking. But Mm -hmm. if they choose to, why not let them? Yeah, I mean, it's their right. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's your body. I feel that, you know, if this is something that you're not ready for, you don't believe that you're going to be able to support it, then I do support, you know, getting rid of the, you know, aborting the child simply because like it is hard to raise a child. You really have to be mentally (laughs) ready for this. And a lot of people aren't. Financially, (laughs) all of that. So what do you say? Because a lot of people say, Instead of having abortion, um, give it up for adoption. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that is an option. But at, the, at that time, I mean, be a mother myself, like, you really won't, you, you really sh- wouldn't bond with the child. Because once bond, once you have that time and you're bonding, like, me personally, I couldn't give up my child. You right. know, it would make it so much harder because now I've seen the baby, I've held, I've touched, you know, I've looked into the baby's eyes, you know, so that, like, that's the mother's bond and that's that connection, that beginning connection that you get, you know, with that child. So, but if you do feel like, you know, hey, I want to go ahead and proceed with this nine months, then so be it and bless it with, you know, somebody else that cannot have children, you know what I'm saying? Like, to make sure that they are. So you four in. of them, are, are you four of them having abortion or are you four of them having a child and giving it up for adoption? I'm for make them being able to make that decision on their own. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Not in a law, like, oh, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I'm, n- not for it to for you to tell me what I can do with my body or with my children. As long as my child is going to be in the well-being of someone to be able to financially and mentally take care of this child, if I'm not able to, then that's your okay. right, you know? Right. So, and it goes to a lot of things with state, too. Say, for instance, um, you do have a child. And it, mm-hmm. it's some cases where women don't even know that they're pregnant and end mm-hmm. up having a, a child. Right. And you don't want to give it up for adoption, but you don't have the means to take care of it. And that's when DSS or anything come into, and they strip this child from you. So to avoid avoid that, and even if they didn't know, to avoid that, a lot of women want to say, well, I'd just rather have an abortion than bringing mm-hmm. a child into a situation like this mm-hmm. and having to give it up for adoption or, or, or lose it to the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I don't agree. I feel like a woman should be able to set this boundary like, look, I don't want to have this child. Mm-hmm. But I did have a conversation with my boyfriend, and he was basically, basically saying, you knew the consequences of what would happen when mm-hmm. you laid down with this person. So That's if you knew the consequences behind this, you should be able and be prepared for the actions from it. Absolutely, yeah. And he goes to say that, you know, he don't support abortions at all, mm-hmm. which I understand that. But in the same sense, it's like we both know, like, uh, we don't have sex 10, 20, 30 times and we didn't get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And then the 31st time I end up getting pregnant. Now, I'm not prepared to have a child mentally. I'm not pre- uh, prepared to have a child Physically, I'm not prepared to have a child financially. So what do I do in this instance? He said you just have to suck it up and just do it. I mean, yeah, yeah, not everybody's ready to be a parent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, a lot of people have kids, and we're not ready, but you got to get ready. Like, it is what it is. Like, I mean, there's programs out here to be able to assist you with raising the child. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're, you know what I'm saying, you, this is something that you want to do. Like, the sky's the limit. Like, there's... I mean, financially, like you gotta, you just gotta push a little bit harder. You know what I'm Get saying? Like you're not. I, I feel like, in the sense of too, but I'm, I'm, I'm for abortions. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna, like, say, oh, girl, you need to have an abortion. Yeah. Like that nigga ain't shit. I'm not that type of person. Mm-hmm. But if you choose to, because of your own personal reasons, I'm not against it. And I don't feel like the government should be able to have that power over me, saying yeah. that you have to. I agree with that. Yeah, but. If you do, I could tell you that this, this is me. Like, my first child that I had, because I was out here, like, I, I knew I was going down the wrong path. Mm-hmm. The universe said, my child, I'm going to bless you with this child because you need to slow down. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> so, so lesson learned, you know. <laughs> so if you don't have an abortion, I feel like it's, it's a, a different light and you can go a different route with it, but... Mm-hmm. I don't feel like this this should be passed. And what they're trying to do is now with the Supreme, the Supreme Court is trying to overthrow Ray and Bobby, which is uh, against uh, versus Jackson and the 
health organization. They're trying to overthrow that and overturn the road because nullifying this, it eliminates a lot with the federal government. And, again, it goes back to the state. So if a state can handle it, each state can handle each situation on its own. And I feel like in New York, I don't think they will do that. Mm -hmm. But in Tennessee, South Carolina, and Texas, I feel like they were like, no, you got to have this child. So with that being said, Mm -hmm. do do you feel like personally it's taking away a woman's right? Or do you feel like they're taking away human rights? Yeah, I mean, like, it's your human right and your woman right. You know what I'm saying? Because who are you to tell me? <laughs> like, you're not going to help me raise this child right. if I was to have it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you're not going to be here to help me discipline this child when they're acting out and decide that they want to, you know what I'm saying, do their own thing. Like, you will, you know what I'm saying? So, But they'll be there to take that child exactly. when you discipline that child for it. For yeah. doing, you know what I'm saying, trying to make sure that you're setting standards for it. You know what I'm saying? To make sure that they have a better opportunity and we're trying to you know, discipline our child than anything. Like, it's not, you know, it's not back, like, back in the day where you get a woman <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're going to straight up, right. But right. like, now you touch a child, like, you call DSS, you call the cops, everybody got to get involved. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? With the child, I mean, like, and that's causing more, you know, stress on the parent, you know, when we're mm-hmm. trying to make sure that we're giving the best Everything. we can for our child. So with that being said, if the law does come in effect, especially in South Carolina, where we at, do you think that it should be a law um, with the man impregnating a woman to have some kind of attachment to it? Like, say, for instance, the guy get the, the woman mm-hmm. pregnant, and I feel like if he abandoned that woman, and we, we do have child mm-hmm. support laws, but no, I feel like if I have to have this child and this man needs to be like, oh, now you have to stay with this woman since you had this child with this woman. Mm -hmm. By law, you have to stay with this woman 18 years to take care of this child or it's going to be consequences. Yeah, no, I don't agree with that at all. You know what I'm saying? Because not everybody's made for each other. But if, but but I'm saying, which is correct, but if they pass a law saying that I can't have an abortion, then they should pass a law saying that this man has to be with this woman and raise this child together as a family. Because you got to think about it. It's taking away women, right? What are the consequences for the men? Right, but I mean, like, if you're going to force somebody to be with them, you know what I'm saying, how well do you think that relationship is going to work out? How well are you going to... But you're going to force me to have a child with this man. Why not not on his end be forced to do something as well? Yeah, um... I don't know. I mean, like, me personally, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. like, if things aren't working and he is not a good example for the child, like, I don't even want you to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, we made this child together. And child support, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? That's going to mm-hmm. help us financially sometimes. But with the economy continuing to change, yeah. I mean, especially with the gas prices, like, oh these gosh. child support, like, it's nothing, especially if they don't have a, an amazing job. You know what I'm saying? But financially, supporting them financially is just not it. Like, mm-hmm. you got to, you know, really have a relationship with this child to show them and, a better... And that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. if 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 we have to have these child, if they 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 kill, clear out Roe versus Wade where we can't mm-hmm. have abortion in a certain amount of time, I feel like they should force the man, if I got to have this child, they should force this man to be in the home with the mother and the child. Yeah, they, um, should, they should force him because you got to think about it. If I have to have this child... The man can go out and continuously do what he do. So this right here, if if a law was set in place with this, he won't be sticking his dick in everybody or having sex with random women because he know the consequences behind mm-hmm. it. And women be like, oh, no, I'm not trying to go to jail or I'm not going to do this, so I'm not having a child. Mm-hmm. So that will set limits on both sides if it was to go in effect. Mm-hmm. But I do agree because, of course, sometimes you have a one-night stand. Which that goes back to what my boyfriend saying. You know what you was doing when right. you laid down. But in the same sense, if they pa- they passed a law where this is going to be out of the Constitution and we don't have to, um, we can't have an abortion. I feel like a man should have the consequences behind it too because it's make two to make a child, and it shouldn't be just on me to just to have the child. I mean, at the end of the day, I think you know what I'm saying they made protection for us. They made protection for y'all. You know what I'm saying for men. And if you're not planning on having children, you know what I'm saying protect yourself. Like it is what it is. Like I don't like me being stuck. Like me being stuck with somebody that is just not gonna work. You know what I'm saying. Like in the beginning, you might think, oh. 
it's cool. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like this could work. You know what I'm saying? But the more and the longer you're with somebody, you know what I'm saying? You're growing. You know what I'm saying? You're learning new things. I'm just like, hold up. <laughs> that wasn't in the resume. So <laughs> I don't know Let's if I like this. So. <laughs> Right. So, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's better, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, like, when you're a single parent, you know what I'm saying? It's tough, you know what I'm saying? It's hard Absolutely. to raise a child because two is better than one. Right. But sometimes one is better than two because if the other person is toxic, you know what I'm saying? What are, what examples are you setting for your child, for your kids? You know what I'm saying? Like, And that goes into, too, like, what we, like, us, our, our generation and the generation behind us, we need to analyze the people that mm-hmm. we sleep Absolutely. with. We yeah. need to sit here and know the people. We need to go back to courting. <laughs> we need to go back to courting and we need to go back to actually getting to know the family. Yes, yes. And actually, and I'm, I'm not going to say that on live, but <laughs> if I would have known what I know after I got pregnant, it's a mm-hmm. lot of things that would have been different. Absolutely, yes. yeah. Because you have to know how somebody is raised to know what kind of mindset mm-hmm. they have to have a child with them. So I feel like now, women and men are just having sex. Yeah. And not, not having sex with a purpose. And the purpose mm-hmm. has to be, a, a man, a, to be honest with me, a man, the purpose of having sex is, is to procreate. Mm-hmm. Right, do I really, before I lay down with this man, do I really want to procreate with this man? Mm-hmm. Can I see myself with a, have a child with this man? What kind of job does this man have? <laughs> I feel like we should do a thorough check, like, do he have what is his medical history? Do he mm-hmm. have di- is he a diabetic? Uh, do he have high blood pressure? Uh, mm-hmm. Do they have cancer running their family? What is his credit score? Mm-hmm. Is do he is That's he important. A, absolutely <laughs> is he able to pay off something? What is his job history? Mm-hmm. If you can't stay with a job for a uh, amount of time, then there's no way you can stay with a woman, a fucking woman for this amount of time because you don't know consistency. So now a lot of things is we see off looks, popularity, and just off of first emotions. We need to dig deep before we actually lay down with it. It might be beneficial for them to pass it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's why we date. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're supposed to date. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to learn the person. But, you know, you know? dating, a lot of times, I'm going to say seven times out of ten, you're going to have sex with a person before you date them. Because sex is, what we brought up, is a major part of the relationship. Well, but, I mean, it kind of depends on your morals also. You know what I'm saying? Because if... Like, if you out here randomly having sex, like, what morals do you have? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, we're going to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? So, if you just having sex with these random people, like, what are you doing? Are you are upset? Are you, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you dealing with yourself? Are you trying to find yourself? Like, what is the issue? There's something. That's you know going on. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I can say, and it comes to me, too. I'm not saying I'm out, I was out sleeping with everybody because mm-hmm. that wasn't the case. But I knew that if I didn't have a energy or a sexual connection with somebody i couldn't be with that person because right. it was like it's more of a physical thing with me mm-hmm. but as a woman we have this thing called an intuition so we kind of know you know what i'm saying <laughs> we have to learn so how me, to we scratch yes, that out. <laughs> yes. i understand we have to learn how to listen to that person sometimes because you know they that that what we hear is you know it means well and sometimes we you know overthink it and you know push it to the side but mm-hmm. sometimes you just kind of kind you gotta take it Take a little minute to yourself and say, hey, like, I'm talking to this person. Like, what would my future be like? You know what I'm saying? Plan so that you won't have an unplanned pregnancy and then have to do all this <laughs> other extra stuff, you know, to put into right. place. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just. But how do how do we get women, on your opinion, how do we get women to actually do that? Because it goes to the instance if you're out and you meet a guy, he texts you, he's saying all the right things, and you're like, oh, my God. This might be the one you spend a time together, mm-hmm. and when you actually get intimate or actually be around this person, they're completely different. So, oh yeah, it's like how do you how do how how are you able to do that? I mean, like personally, I mean, I'm married. We've been married for eleven years. Yeah, it's not a good day every day, but at the end of the day, like you you have to date. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn this person, talk to them. You know what I'm saying? And you have to like. You have to know what you want as a woman. You know what I'm saying? Once you know exactly what you want as a woman, then, you know, interviewing, you know, your your significant or 
proposed significant other, you know what I'm saying, making sure that everything is aligned. Because sometimes when we're young, like, we just don't care. Like, we out here, you know what I'm saying, we learning, like, I don't like you, I don't like you next. Okay, no, I don't like nothing you got going on. You know what I'm saying, because this is an experiment. Like, you're curious, you want to know. You know what I'm saying? So they do have the the time frame to actually experience and do that. So my thing is, and I've I've said this in numerous podcasts, a man can build a woman into what he want her Absolutely. to be, but a woman can't build a man into he what he want him to be because the mother has already done it. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. I was explain, elaborate. Because I mean, honestly, as a woman, you can mold your husband into your husband. You know what I'm saying? But he has to want to be able to change. Like if he's in these streets and like, oh, I want this girl, this girl, that girl. You know what I'm saying? He's not moldable. You got to have someone that's willing to change, someone that's really to get on your level. You know what I'm saying? Like mentally, physically. You know what I'm saying? And want goals. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people don't want goals. Like what do you want to see yourself in five years? <laughs> if you can't answer that question, next. You know what I'm but saying? But see, because you got a lot of men. That that's not going to be able to answer that question because they've never been asked that question. So how do you deal with that situation? Um, that's a really good question. I mean, because it's it's like you have a lot of yeah. men that's they haven't been taught that. You know, or they, just they don't, don't know. even know, and they out here doing what women, like as we say, I don't like this. I don't. I'm learning what I like and what mm-hmm. I want. So when it comes to a situation like that, how do you? Yeah. How do you? How does that work? So it's kind of like an interview, honestly. Like, you know, when you go to a job, they're going to ask you, you know what I'm saying, like, what are your goals? What do you expect? And it's the same thing in a relationship because, honestly, it's it's like a business transaction. It is. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, we need to know, like, what do you expect? What are your expectations? What do you want out of of a man? What do you Mm -hmm. expect out of a father, a boyfriend, a husband? You know what I'm saying? What are your expectations? So, like, if I know that... I'm out here in these streets and I'm not going to meet those expectations. Why waste this time? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we just need to, you know, learn and have a conversation. And if you can't sit down and have that conversation, like, mentally with me, then obviously you're not ready to go to the next level. But how do you – because me and you both have girls. We mm-hmm. have girls. Absolutely. On the verge of – how do we communicate that with our children? I mean, like, because they're young. They're yeah. going to have to experience it. But how do we communicate this with – them because men yeah. you we we know mm-hmm. but they don't know so what would you say to them as they get older what to expect out of men what to see not to see and mm-hmm. what to gain from it i mean setting those expectations you know what i'm saying a mannerable any any man that disrespect for honest honestly like keeping it 1000 any man that disrespected his mama he's never going to respect you right. as a woman like right. keep it real but if a if a man respects his mother yes ma'am no ma'am he opens the door for you i mean your feet be ashy let me baby let me lotion them you know what i'm saying <laughs> so it's like go put the lotion on your feet like baby let me lotion you like he's going to take care of you like those are the expectations expectations we're going to set in our children like to let them know like them calling you out your name is not cool like mm-hmm. i don't care how mad you are, what the situation is, like, there is no disrespect from from that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, and I understand that situations might get a little heated and, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But as long as it's not, like, an ongoing thing, I mean, I honestly don't, for one, if I find out you call my daughter out her name, it's going to be a problem for me, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? I got ready, you know (laughs) Exactly, you know, but I know that as a parent, we got to kind of let them learn on their own Mm -hmm. and figure out what they like and what they don't like, what they're going to tolerate and what they're not going to tolerate, you know what I'm saying? Because we all had to learn it, you know what I'm saying? That's how we are, that's why we're here today, you know what I'm saying? Because we know, and I think that as you mature, um, you kind of start figuring out your way in life and, like, what you expect, what you're going to deal with and what you're not going to deal with. And I, I I feel like this, and I, I, I might sound crazy, but I would rather for my daughter to mature faster than mm-hmm. to be naive to the world because the world has so many tricks, so mm-hmm. many things up their sleeve. Like, I want her to be aware of her surroundings. I want Absolutely. her to be aware of this and this and that. So I prefer her to mature a little faster when it comes to that. But then it's a thin line where you're like, listen, little girl, I will fuck you up in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that's, that's all they understand. Like, they don't understand. Like, can you please not do this? Like, hold up now. I'm going to have to get real with you because that's sometimes, with, depending on your child, like how they are. Like, me as a woman, I've been through a lot. You know yes. what I'm saying? And I have four girls. They all have a different personality, but yet I see myself in each 
in every one of them. You know right. what I'm saying? So you just got to kind of learn how to talk to them, but not like just be like solely just their friend, but a parent, an understanding parent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To help set those expectations because at the end of the day, a girl is always going to want to be like mommy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like we got to mature. We got to set those expectations because if we out here... <laughs> Popping it like it's hot, dropping it like it's hot air on these clothes. What do you expect? What do you think I <laughs> can I, t- I told you that that conversation that we had previously, <laughs> like prior before the podcast, I told my daughter, I said, Look, girl, <laughs> it's only one hoochie mama, and that hoochie mama is me. Ain't no other hoochie mamas in this yeah. house. And she's like, What a hoochie mama? I said, A mama that's a hoochie, but I keep it real classy. <laughs> and you know, oh, it's funny my. to say that. And I had that conversation with her, just talking, just popping off of me. But mm-hmm. that's factual. It's like, right. Even though, and I have music that I do that's explicit, which I don't let my children listen to. Right. Um, certain songs I don't let them listen to because it's an adult thing. Right. But I, I completely understand that. So I want to get into this even with, you know, teaching our, 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 our daughters um, how to grow and what to do into homosexual and heterosexual sex or mm-hmm. being like in the other like in the same genre mm-hmm. so like how do we how do you feel about that so if your daughter did decide to mm-hmm. say i am mommy i like the same kind of mm-hmm. person that i am how do we how do we how do we, how do we, I'm not saying it's wrong, but how do we prevent that? Like, because a lot of um, TV shows are actually showing, like, woman on woman, man on man, man being women, women being men, mm-hmm. showing this. I mean, like, there's really, honestly, there's no way, I personally don't think there's a way for you to prevent it, but there's a way for you to explain, because typically when a child does something, they do it because they don't understand it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we just need to, like, if my daughter was to come to me and say, Mommy, I have a girlfriend. I mean, like, I would probably lose my shit. Like, I'm probably, <laughs> I'm not going to be exactly happy, but I'm not going to treat her any different. Like, right. I'm going to try to understand why she feels like this is what she want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. did or either, like, and typically from my, um, I have a lot of friends that um, are, you know, lesbian and so like typically when I've talked to them they are this way because of a man that hurt them yeah deeply and a woman can get on their mental level you know what I'm saying and because they can get on that mental level they feel that connection and that's really what a woman wants they want a connection Mm -hmm. and if you can't connect with them you know what I'm saying it's nothing seems to work so like I would have to have a conversation you know what I'm saying to really understand like is this really what you want or is this just like something that you're experiencing? Like you want to, you're curious, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has that little curiosity, you know, to figure out like, okay, well, it didn't work out. I don't like this. So maybe, but with my best friend, you know what I'm saying? She understands (laughs) me. Like maybe I, you know what I'm saying? We could get along and we can, you know, be together. So it's just something that like they don't understand. So I would have to, you know, sit them down and have a conversation. Like what makes you feel this way? Like, why do you feel that, you know, this sex is for you or this is what you want to do. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, making sure they understand. And, I mean, like, if this is... If they you, don't get it and they're like, oh, well, this is what I want, would you feel some kind of way? Oh, I mean, I'm going to love you regardless. You're my child. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. you're, my, you're a piece of me. Like, I'm going to love you regardless. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a judgmental type of person. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not going to judge you for who you are. I'm going to love you for who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And... Um, I think that's what is most important, you know, since sometimes they grow out of it. It could be like a little phase they're going through, and yeah. then they're just like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking later on. <laughs> and then they get back on the, you know, on where they need to be. But sometimes, you know, like you just got to kind of let them go. Yeah, you gotta- I can say, you know, because I, I, I dated women. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that. I dated women, and I realized after maybe like seven years after, the reason why I dated women, it was rebellious towards my mom. And it was it was more of I didn't feel the love that I felt like I needed mm-hmm. from my mom yeah. to and I got that from a woman. But you I knew that for it. Yeah. I knew that I wasn't gonna be with the woman because mm-hmm. I didn't want to be with a woman the rest of my life, but I knew that was something I was missing, I was looking for. So with that being said, like with my children I tried to overindulge them with I love you, hugs and kisses, but what if it still goes the opposite way, which, again, I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. I, and, and it might be biased, 
I'm fine with my daughters being gay, but if it was a son, I'd probably be a little bit more on edge with it. Yeah, yeah. And don't don't shoot me. That's just what mm-hmm. I'm feeling. And I'm going to go into the, the LGBTQTIA <laughs> community, and I have a lot of friends with that. And I want to go into what this meant because I, I couldn't figure it out. And it is, it is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual. So... That's a lot, <laughs> you know, that is a lot. And I'm going to go some more into it. What is it? Heterosexual, sexual. What is it? Um, what is that? Monosexism uh-huh. in oneself and others out of self-interest and a concern for well-being of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual people. So I had to look that up to see what the name is. So I guess it's just people liking people, period. Right. It doesn't matter what it is <laughs> or how you feel. That's what it is. So I understand, like, people connect. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot on the spiritual side as well. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like the soul was his, the past life of a soul was a woman and it came into a man body. So now it's trying to implement the woman body that they had in the previous life because they miss it? Or do you think they were born this way or do you think it was taught? I mean, I honestly don't believe that you were born that way. Like I like I said, I have a lot of friends that are um, lesbian. They are, absolutely. Um, you know, they're gay. Like I have, and like, I really feel that my personal opinion that it's just something that they may have, you know, be missing or something that they're looking for in someone and they weren't a- able to find that in the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I mean, like, that's just my opinion. I don't, I'm not really for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, and I, and I get a lot of people say that, you know, I've been like this my whole life. I've been like this yeah, since I yeah. was a child. I've been like this since, but me personally, so they have I just f- have seen that. I feel like you know what I'm saying, influence. like. Yeah. But then you have a lot of, um, you know, people that gay or transgender saying that. No, I didn't see it. I just felt this way, or Mm-mm. it wasn't brought onto me out since I came out in the mama moon. It was just like I wanted to do here. I want this is how I feel. This is what it is. But I feel like it's influence. Absolutely. I mean, like at the end of the day, a little bit of psychology for y'all. So there is this thing called a conditioned mind. Uh So like if you were to have a whole bunch of babies and you're going to put them in a room and then you have, let's say we have five children, brand new babies. We're going to put them in the room and one room. We're going to have another five babies. We're going to put them in another room. So with one room, it's more like you they don't have like structure, um, things set in place, like, you know, they don't have that, but the other room they do. So as a as the human mind is trained yeah. and it's called a conditioned mind. So basically if you're conditioning these children like to meet goals and you're not telling them right for wrong and they're not being introduced to the opposite sex, then I believe that, you know what I'm saying, they're gonna grow up to, you know, to be very successful people, you know, to be able to have a, a great relationship with the opposite sex because it's what they're trained to do. It's what they're taught to do. It's what they've seen. So you know heterosexual. So you have to be... So a lot of people say um, with cartoons and everything, girl mm-hmm. kissing boy yeah. and uh, you see your mom and daddy kiss. Mm-hmm. If that wasn't in effect at all, do you think that another man will be... Uh, another child will be attracted to the same sex? Because they don't see it. Or do you think it's automatically a natural instinct? Oh, I like this because it's this. I mean, honestly, I think that sometimes it has to be with a lot of curiosity. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not what we're taught. And a lot of people do rebel. You know what I'm saying? So because we're t- like some people are taught, you know, through the Bible, like, you know, man is for woman and woman is for man. You know what I'm saying? That's what we know. Yeah. So sometimes when we don't get Which our way. Which is procreation. Yeah. And like we don't, and sometimes we want to go the opposite way. Like, I don't want to do anything you got going on. So I'm going to go this opposite way. Yeah. And that's how, you know what I'm saying? This happens. Like, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now I don't want to do what they, you know, what mom and dad told me to do. Cause My, you know what I'm saying? For me, so, for instance. Yeah. And like, they're looking for that. But I just feel that, you know, as a parent, if we are, you know, working together and a mother, because 
mothers, we are nurturers, right. like, by nature. Mm-hmm. And, like, even, like, when I had my first daughter, y'all, I didn't know how to change a diaper. I couldn't put no stockings on. Like, I <laughs> cried every day, like, because it was a struggle. Like, I was not mentally or physically prepared to have a child. But at the end of the day, like, I was able to nurture and to, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to teach her the things that she needed to know. And a father for a daughter <laughs> She needs that. She needs that guidance. She needs that structure. She needs that love to let her know this is how a man needs to treat you. Yeah. This is what you need to be expecting. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you're growing up, if they treat you any other way, then you need to cut ties. You know what I'm saying? This is not what snip, it is. Snip. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't nothing to cut the bitch <laughs> off. You hear? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I agree with that. But in the same sense, too, I also agree that. You learn from your mistakes. Absolutely, yeah. So if you make mistakes, you learn from it, and you move forward. Mm-hmm. But I also think that everything is taught. Absolutely. Gay yeah. can be taught. Mm-hmm. Heterosexual can be taught. Is it natural? Of course, we see man and woman because it's procreation. Mm-hmm. Of course, mm-hmm. it's natural. We see it in a lot of animals. But we do see what it came with studies like giraffes. Giraffes. Have sex with the same sex. So. I I had no idea. (laughs) Yeah. Giraffes have sex with the same sex sometimes. Absolutely. (laughs) So. That's why I was wondering if it. If you think it's tall or if it's something. So me personally. And I have two girls. And again. I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing against people being gay or Hmm. transgender. But I do have to explain. We was watching Batman. Mm -hmm. Batwoman. She's gay. It comes on with W E. Yeah, but that's being taught. That's what's on the TV. Like those are the so entertainment. Yeah. I had asked the question to someone and I said, you know, one of my, my gay friends, I said, Why do they think it's okay to put this out and they know kids under the age of fourteen yeah. to seven is watching this? Absolutely. They was like, Why is it okay for them to put out mother mommy and daddy kissing each other when they leave out to go to work mm-hmm. in the same shows? Mm-hmm. I said, because it's normal. He said, why Why do you think it's normal? Why this is not normal? And I'm like, you know, because you can procreate. But and that's the, the purpose of having sex is to procreate. Exactly, yeah. I mean, and, you know, but, and, and two women can't produce. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> two men can't produce. And the purpose, you have to reproduce. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's... Either way, this is a tough conversation. It you know is. what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it absolutely I mean, like, is. with me having four girls, my old, my youngest is nine, and like, I she was watching this SpongeBob, y'all, and I was, I was walking through the office, and I was like, oh, cool, SpongeBob, but Sandy had a motherfucking shape, like out this <laughs> world. I was like, oh my, <laughs> what Sandy, this girl, you know, she, she do though. She have on that little tight little suit on. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, why is her shape like that? And Mr. Krabs was really throwing some shots, like trying to get her. I was like, what kind of sponge? <laughs> oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Like, and it, it, and to me, I feel like you know when we were growing up. We had dolls. We mm-hmm. were had yeah. dolls to take care of kids. Men had machine guns and mm-hmm. army men to take care of uh, fighting and this and this and that. But now it's yeah, you it's know, a like lot, yeah. Can, and it goes in to say like you know, like in the future, trans transgender men will be able to have a uterus implant to have children. Mm-hmm. So I what is this, uh, Doctor Dala? Is Dali, what is his name? Dr. Dali? Yeah. He's supposed to perform the first womb transplant mm-hmm. for a transgender man. Which, after I did my research, is he's not going to be able to have, well, she, mm-hmm. who got to use the pronouns, not, is not going to be able to have the child naturally. The egg has to have to be implanted with this, uh, the sperm so mm-hmm. he can, she can have the child. And they're going to have to do a C-section to do it. Mm-hmm. But this is what is getting ready to happen for our future. And with that being said, I have to play this. And this is from TikTok, too. I have to play this this segment for you guys. And listen to me and tell me what you guys think said when trans women are able to carry children due to a uterus transplant. Creating competition when it's not necessary is a sign of insecurity. Either way, no, no one would be upset, but I don't think we'd recommend it. 
I don't think we should really be talking about this in the same way we talk about other transplants because you're supposed to have a heart. You're supposed to have a kidney. The male body is not supposed to have a uterus. And because you're biologically male, if you were to get a uterus transplant, your male DNA in conjunction with your male body would treat that uterus like the infection it thinks it is and attack accordingly. So before you even start talking about having children, you need to try to survive the transplant. If you don't naturally produce enough progesterone to maintain that uterine lining. You could take it synthetically, but that will probably cause you more harm than good. You also don't produce enough blood to keep both you and baby alive. Your pelvis is too narrow and too thick and it's not designed to spread. It would literally shatter. So nah, no one would be upset. Try it if you want, but why would anyone be upset over something that would literally end you? So I was I watched that on TikTok, you guys, and, and basically uh, the guy, the transgender was like cis women, as they call us, mm -hmm. biological women, are going to be upset when men are able to have children with the uterus transplant. And I'm I was trying to figure out because it kind of boggled me a little bit. Do you think with trans men being able to have children? Is it going to affect the livelihood of biological women? I mean, I don't think it's going to affect our livelihood. I mean, like, honestly, if they feel that they can deal with it, I mean, like, hell, we go through a lot giving birth. I mean, it is not made for the weak. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. a lot of things that our body goes through to to bring a child into this world. Mm -hmm. And if this is something they want, they think that they can handle, like, hey, by all means, be my guest. I mean, I have four cesarean sections, and it is not definitely not for the week. You know what I'm saying? Like, I swear my insides were going to fall out, like, every time I stood <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? It's not th something I want to, like, go through, you know, all the time. But, I mean, like, if this is something that they think that they want to experience, I mean, it's always something, you know, like, if you've never experienced it, like, it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? To be able to produce a child and yeah. to actually give birth, like, that is something that, it's absolutely priceless, right. you know what I'm saying? But I, 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 and I look at it a lot like this too because I, I see a lot of things and I, I do a lot of research. Is my thing is, and again, I don't have anything to do anything negative to say about the trans community, mm -hmm. but it's the fact that are they trying to force us into extinction, saying that we don't need to be here because they're able to have these implants or. They're able to have children. So now that goes to say is, do a man need a woman? I mean, absolutely. I mean, like, two is better than one. <laughs> I mean. And why is it competition uh, with biological women and transgender uh, women that's transitioning into womanhood? Why is it that competition or why is it? It's, it's feel it's the need to compete with a biological woman or a transitional woman. Why is it that? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't feel the need to compete. At the end of the day, like, I am a woman. You know right. what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that goes on with my body that I would rather not have right. to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially, like, your menstrual cycle, having to deal with that, like, a lot of people have it worse than others. You know what I'm saying? That's not something that a man can ever experience. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that is something solely for a woman. I mean, and that's us being able to be able to produce is what identifies us as a woman. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, even if, you know, a male was to get a uterus, they still don't have everything <laughs> to say that you're actually a woman. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And. I mean, and, and you know, like even with the transplant, you have to actually get the embryo embedded inside right. of you, and then you can't have it natural because you don't have any fallopian tubes mm -hmm. to push it out or the canal to push it through. Right. And they said it's more of the experience mm -hmm. of actually being able to carry it in the womb. But mm -hmm. is this? And I'm. It goes to my conspiracy theory because you know who I who I who <laughs> eyes is. Is it going to be manufactured where it's like, okay, we can eliminate women, and then I'm going to go back to Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. You don't want us to have an abortion, but you're allowing men. men to have a uterus implant. What is going on here? What is going on here? Is it, is it, is it, is it you want children to be produced or you don't, or you, don't, you want women to be produced by men? Mm -hmm. I mean, children to be produced by men or and not women. So that's why I guess, and then it goes in my, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. all up in there, like, what is going on here? Which I have mm-hmm. nothing against men. If they want to do this, mm-hmm. then then fine. But what? where is the line drawn? Right, where is right. it? What is behind what's going on here? And why are we pinning transitional men against biological women? Mm-hmm. And you see that a lot because the simple fact is, oh, oh she's jealous because I'm this and this, or I'm sleeping with her husband, or I'm doing this. And that's not the case with regular women. It's more right. of like, what is behind this? Right. Is it a gender push because we have the shown on TV to our children mm-hmm. of what it is? And which, again, I'm not against it because I used to be gay. Mm-hmm. And I'm still attracted to women. Mm-hmm. I feel like women are beautiful and they that's what nurtured the earth. Absolutely, yeah. But what's behind it? That's what mm-hmm. I'll be trying to figure out. But anywho, we're not going to go... <laughs> Too much deep <laughs> into it. So next, we got the tax queen coming to you with a little business mindset and make sure that you have everything set up together. How are we going to start this off? So I'm going to just talk to you guys just a little bit about um, the steps to estimate a startup cost when you're launching your business. So I've done a little bit of research, um, and according to one study, startups created um, over 2 million jobs in the, in the United States in 2015 alone. So in 2018, there was 30 million such organizations operating in the country. So due to the pandemic, like that has increased 94%. And a lot of people are starting to say, I'm going to do my own thing because job security just isn't there. Mm -hmm. You know, especially like when the recession comes or like the pandemic, like a lot of people laid off thousands of people off and this was not something that they expected so like people and people operate human nature operates off of security so and even as a woman like with men like if there's no security there then we get a little unstable like hold up (laughs) listen daddy listen (laughs) i'm about to go out here and be a street walker for a little while now (laughs) right right so you know what i'm saying so basically people are are starting their own businesses to make sure that they have that extra income Mm -hmm. um, if anything was to ever, you know, to happen. But basically having an idea for a product or a service and bringing that that vision into reality is often two different things. So um, it's... So let me ask you that because mm -hmm. if you have the idea and you have the vision, but they're not clicking together, how do you surpass that to actually, like, like, I know I want to do this. This is what the business is going to be based off of. Mm-hmm. But I have this idea to go, boom, 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 A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm-hmm. What do I do after that? So, basically, you got to make a plan. You know what I mean? you got to <laughs> put it on paper. And, and I know that that's old school. But, like, at the end of the day, like, if you put your plan on paper, it's vision. It's visual. So, like, you can see it. You know what I'm saying? You believe it. And seeing is believing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you got to make a plan and make sure that it's in order. And a lot of people start... You know, just because you have an idea doesn't mean that it's going to be reality. Or just because you have a business like, oh, I want to do this, you got to, like, it's just an idea. Like, an idea is not going to make you money. Right. (laughs) I got a lot of ideas. I ain't made no coins off of it yet. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to really make it into reality and you got to put those plans in place Mm -hmm. by, you know, putting on paper, you know, doing some research on, like, what is this? going to cost me you know like if I want to start my business like right now and I have no coins how do you really think that's going to work out for you you know what I'm saying like you really gotta you know and a lot of people you know they quit their jobs not having a plan and then they wonder why things are not getting paid oh I can't do this I can't do that because you don't have a plan (laughs) and I walk in stuff blind Right. It's going right. to happen for me. <laughs> Universe, help me out. Right. And sometimes that does work out, you know what I'm saying? But then again, at the end of the day, even though when you start rolling, you always have to go back to your plan. So if anything doesn't work out or, like, you're missing something, because running the business is a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes those steps just can't be missed. And especially if you're trying to grow and move forward, it's a hassle to stop and have to go back and replan. Yeah. So if you already have that on paper and you already have that vision put down, it's nothing to go back back and take a look like so do you have to have a plan b or plan a has to work i mean it's always good to have a plan b you know what i'm saying like it's good to have a plan b like and that's where you come in like so if your business um if you're you're setting up a business and you know this doesn't work like what else can you offer like you know what i'm saying but also being able to position yourself as 
um, the expert and having that confidence in yourself to be able to sell that product because now you're marketing your business. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So, like, it's not just like, oh, I have this this product for sale and it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? I need you to buy it. Like, you got to <laughs> tell me <laughs> how is this going to benefit me. Give me that money. Exactly. You know what I'm it. saying? Like, how is this going to benefit me? And then especially when you're – when you're first starting, like, I think that is so important to plan. And I was one of those people that didn't. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? Like, I was one of those people. I was laid off in my job. I did not expect it. Like, I was top dog in my job. Like, HR manager. Like, I was running some shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, I didn't think that my job was going anywhere anytime soon. But then when um, stuff started slowing down, like, I got that letter, like, and that, that severance pack is like, ma'am. This is your last week. You know what I'm oh saying? My God, no. <laughs> and there's no plan B. You know what I'm saying? So now what do I do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what am I good? And then I have to, you know, find, like, what am I good at? What I lo- what do I love to do? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, working in HR for so long and working in accounting, I love the people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I love to be able to solve their problems, to be able to help them. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't so much of, like, oh, I made all of this money because at the end of the day, I work so much, so I really don't even get to see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But as a business owner and being able to plan – um, you know, setting up your business structure, that gives me more time with what I love, like my children. Mm-hmm. I can, they can, I can work from home, like being able to work anywhere, you know what I'm saying, in the world and still have what I love the most, you know what I'm saying? And to be able to have them see mommy be CEO, you my, know what I'm saying? Mommy like, be a superwoman, you, <laughs> you know, know what I'm saying? And like yes. that makes you feel good, not only as a mother, but as a person and, you know, being able to be accomplished. Um, and so you want to make sure you put things in plan and, you know, calculating those estimated charges, you know, or expenses that you're going to have so that you are prepared. So um, and then it's also being recession proof, you know what I'm saying? Because like if you have five thousand dollars, I got this five thousand dollars and I'm going to buy this. I'm going to rent this lease, this building that's going to cost me a thousand dollars. And then I have my software. I got my CRM. I got my marketing. I got all these other extra expenses that I have to have to make my business operational. Uh-huh. How long do you think that five thousand dollars is going to last you? A month, <laughs> right? One you know month, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not going to last you long at all. And with the fact that you are now doing this all on your own because you don't have the funds to hire someone, you know what I'm saying? It's just going to be like a huge mess. So it's just better to put it on paper. You know, write out like your expenses. Like if this is something that you're going to have every month, like your rent payment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In my personal opinion, I think that, and this is not something that I done, but like as I've learned in working with other businesses, um, at least having six months of expenses, because if anything was to happen, because in the first couple of months, you're not going to make any money. And which (laughs) I've learned that. But the question is, how do you build that six months up for you to be able to have that? So if you're working, you want to have a savings account, you know what I'm saying, and have like 10 percent of your check. Going into a savings account, you know what I'm saying? So you want to prepare before you quit that job. And if you are, you know, laid off, what did you do while you had that job? Like, did you get 401k? Did you get, you know, any type of savings? Did you set up any type of contributions that are automatically coming out of your check? Doing that 401k, typically your job is going to match that. So it's free money. Mm -hmm. So, like, why would you not do it? You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to get into that on a whole different (laughs) episode. (laughs) Because I've been out for 401k, but I I just don't. Yeah, it, it, it don't and, make sense to me right yeah. now. But once you can teach me, that, you know. yeah, and that's what a lot of people don't understand is because like when you get a job, they're like, oh, we have all these benefits, but the thing is, is they do not explain, and they when they do explain, it's on a level like nobody can understand. So you have to be able to get on, you know, my level to where I understand because yeah. financial, like if financial wasn't my expertise. Like, why are you saying these big words to me? (laughs) I don't know what she's talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I need for you, and that's what I like to do. I like to make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? So if you are investing into your 401K, what is this going to benefit you if you were to lose your job, if you needed emergency funds, you know, type of things like that. And those are things that we can, you know, put into place while you're working. You know what I'm saying? And then when you are planning to set up a business, like what are the things that you're going to expect on a monthly basis Mm -hmm. so that you are prepared? You know what I'm saying? So that you won't run out of cash flow because that's why a lot of businesses fail. Because they just go without a plan. I and let the universe help me out. <laughs> Swoop me in, universe. Tell me what I need to do next. 
Right. Yeah. So it's just those type of things, you know, to be able to kind of like, you know, to put into place mm-hmm. um, for your business to be able to, you know, for you to be able to kind of grow and scale. Yeah. I can't wait to get into this because uh, I'm mm-hmm. excited because, again, you're going to help me build my business that I got on the mm-hmm. back end. A couple of businesses I got on the back end. So this is going to be excited. We can actually do it Absolutely. live. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and help, you know. Right. Absolutely. Right, right. So but what yeah. is the benefits of actually doing this you got your business and mm-hmm. then you, you can actually commute to home and actually work from home what is the benefits from that so benefits I mean like not having to go in and clock in not having to be a, a nine to five you know what I'm saying you could take your break like with me having four kids oh my god <laughs> like it's always some type of different drama I have four girls oh, so yeah. it is drama every day like they're into some type of drama. Like, I like this girl and I don't like this girl. And this was my best friend, but now I don't like her. So, like, we have to, you know, take off. And the job, they don't understand. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> they don't care. Like, okay, well, you got to do this because this is what makes me money. And that's what they, you know, they understand. And even though they say, oh, work-life balance is important, that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> like, I mean, It's important honestly, for me, like, mentally, I can't right. lie, though, because I cannot work from home. And the the mind thought of me actually bringing my work inside to my personal space, mm-hmm. it stressed me the fuck out. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, I can't do this. I got to deal with this. No, it has to be separate from me. Even if right. I, 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 I'm the type of person, if I start a business, it has to be a business away from home. I, I mean, absolutely. And they, they have co-work spaces that you can rent for, like, $50 a month. You know what I'm saying? Just to kind of cup, you know. But at the, at the end of the day, it's like, Megan, you got to be here at 9 o'clock. But, Mommy, I need you to be at my awards at 10. You know what I'm saying? Like, And if you don't be at my awards, I'm going to be super upset. So, like, you got to weigh your eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mommy, is Mommy going to be there for this award? You know what I'm saying? Or is Mommy going to be at work? Mommy going to make that happen. Listen, I missed a couple of guys and make it up on the back end. You know what I'm saying? But, like, why not? You know what I'm saying? already have this plan to where Mommy can be at every event. Mommy can be at every award. You know what I'm saying? And still be able to run my business. Like, And if you can't do it from home, you can go to Starbucks. Like, they even have, like, music that you could listen to. It's, like, work music to kind of get you focused. You could go to the library. You know what I'm saying? You can rent, like, co-virtual spaces. And, like, these spaces are freaking amazing. Like, they are, um, like, when you go in, like, it's office setting. Like, it looks 100% professional so that you can kind of get in the zone. But... I'm also having, like, that accountability partner because, like, if you're doing this alone, you can definitely get sidetracked. You and can listen, definitely kind of get My baby is like, <laughs> you need to be held accountable. My baby Absolutely. like, accountability is everything. And, you know, Absolutely. it's crazy. <laughs> I haven't met a person like him. Like, I'm everywhere. And mm-hmm. you, you, I've known you for a couple of years. Yes, and, you yes. know, I'm like, here, this, 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 this. I'm doing here. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And he's like, listen, he has a schedule from mm-hmm. the time he wake up to the time he go to bed, and he's like, oh, what time are you cooking? I'm like, we say that time for cooking? <laughs> like, you know, he has a schedule, so that, like, kind of balanced out everything. Mm-hmm. And, like, I can't I can't believe I, made, I met somebody like this. Like, okay, you're going to be accountable. You said you was doing this, do this at this time. Right. And me, I'm like, I just go with the flow. I'm like, no, I go with the flow. We eat when we get hungry. He's like, no, you got to have this, this, and this to make this right. flow correctly. So exactly. I can yeah. understand Yeah, that. setting those accountability requirements and, mm-hmm. you know, being able to follow through. And, like, at the end of the day, once you get on that schedule, like, life is so much easier because you have things going. You know what I'm saying? And, then like, with us having kids. Yeah. Me having my own business. Right. There's a lot of training <laughs> that I got going on. Like, I, so, like, me having to take out that focus time, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to go home and cook for the kids. Make sure the kids have their homework done. Making sure they're taking a bath and getting in the bed at the, ah, at the right time. The, so, they're not, I'm not, like, thing. cussing everybody out in the house trying to get them up to get on the bus in the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Things like that. So, so I, I mean... This is going to be amazing. So tell us what we can look forward to with this new season, with you being a new co-host and everything. Let us know, like, lay it out. We we ready for it. <laughs> so basically, with the business portion of it, I'm going to teach a lot of, you know, people that have how to s- properly set up their startup uh, business, how to properly plan um, to launch their business. Um, and also, because I do own a tax and accounting firm, I'm going to teach you what credits and, like, tax strategies that you can take advantage of to pay the least amount of taxes oh. at the end of the year so that you're not stuck with this huge tax bill. <laughs> 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 Ten thousand dollars. And that is not fun having to pay that, you know, especially when you have other things going on and having to pay this that ten thousand dollars to the IRS, like 
That's absurd when you could have properly planned. And a lot of people don't do that because they just don't know. We, we don't know. Right. We got another <laughs> outcuts on it. So, listen, um, y'all got to look forward to it. We got um, the business with the tax queen. We mm-hmm. also bringing back sex talk with Icky Vicky. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so, y'all tune in. Make sure y'all listen in. And thank you for tuning in to Rid of Fantasy Podcast on I Say Podcast Network. And y'all see us next week. We love you guys and we out. Real Fantasy Podcast. Real Fantasy. You could say a little or you could say a lot. Dreams are what you ask for, real is what you got Take a few shots, with a queen on her life A rose in the middle, with love on her side It's all a vibe, tonight It's all a vibe, tonight Make sure you tune in tonight